You mentioned when you're talking about that a, a man that everybody knows on this network, a former Senator Arlen Specter, yes, and that he tried to get a couple of words in edgewise when he was in front of the court. Yes, he he was arguing a case just as as uh, representing uh, a client. I can't remember the details of the case right now, and wanted to continue argument and and the, but his time was up and the chief. Uh, insisted that the argument was over, and I, I think Senator Specter had never, never forgiven him for that. Well, not only does he appear not to have forgiven him, but he also introduced legislation to f try to force the court to go on television. That's right. He believed very firmly that the court should go on television. What was your reaction to that resolution that he was trying to get passed? Well, uh, it, that's a difficult issue. It, it's not not one I discuss in the in the case, in the uh, in the book. Um, on the one hand, the televising the court would be good for the, for the court and for the country because I think people would realize that the justices are very thorough in their uh, pre preparation for arguments and their understanding of the cases. They ask intelligent questions and they, the, people I think are generally favorably impressed when they see the court at work. And so that's a very strong plus, and that's really, I think, what uh, Senator Specter's primarily interested in. But the other side of the coin is that television often has unexpected and unintended consequences. And you're never 100% sure that that might not cause a change in the procedure that would have an adverse effect on it. You mentioned football a little earlier. I remember going to a game, sitting in the stands, and all of a sudden the players are standing around for a minute or two. What? What? Why are they? And then you realize it's a commercial. The te television has got get their commercials in, so that it causes changes, and and the televising of legislative proceedings, I think, has had sometimes had an adverse effect on the quality of what goes on. So you're never a hundred percent sure what the qu consequences of televising would be. And, and I think the members of the court, I think most of them feel more strongly than, than I do or I did, but I think they are very concerned that the televising might have an unforeseen adverse impact where both lawyers and justice, an occasional justice might behave differently than he would if he was not being televised. What is your guess as to what will happen over the years with television? Because, for instance, just yesterday when we're recording this, the uh, Pennsylvania <clears throat> State Supreme Court made a big, and you know, uh, had a public meeting where they're going to. They went on television for the first time, and now all their proceedings are on television. Well, and I, and then I think Florida, with Florida Supreme Court, was one of the first to do that too. And I think basically the experience has been has has not been adverse. In fact, they have a library I think in which uh, lawyers can go look at prior arguments and learn a little bit more about the best way to proceed. So I don't, from what I understand, I don't think that to the extent it has been used in state courts, it has had the adverse effect that we can serve. But I think one reason for that is that it's not the most popular program in the, in the world. I don't think there's a, a tremendous audience for uh, the everyday argument of every state Supreme Court uh, decision that is argued. Whereas there's, I think the audience would probably, at least in some cases, be be larger if it uh, arguments of the United States Supreme Court. Think it'll ever go on television? Well, uh, ever is a long word, but but I, I wouldn't hold my breath. That's for sure.